Hi, this is Laura Slominski, a math teacher at Edina High School, and today we're doing section 10.6, Multiplying and Dividing Rational Functions. Um, and you can see the objective says I can multiply rational functions, but that would include division as well. We're going to start with just reviewing how to, re to multiply two fractions together. So in this example, 4 fifths times 5 sixths, I would multiply the 4 by the 5 to find the numerator. And then as a result, you would multiply 5 times 6 to find the denominator. So top times top, bottom times bottom. So 4 times 5 is 20, 5 times 6 is 30. To simplify, we would factor the numerator and denominator. So we could write 20 as 2 times 10, which is the same as 2, times 10 is 2 times 5. Okay, so we could make it a list of prime factors. We could do the same thing with 30. It's the same as 2 times 15, which would be the 2 times 15 is 3 times 5. Now we don't usually write it out this way. We have simpler ways to reduce, but if we wrote it out this way, the top that we got was 20. We said could be written as 2 times 2 times 5. The bottom, which is 30, was 2 times 3 times 5. And you could see that we could cancel out a 5 on top and bottom, a 2 on top and bottom, and we get 2 thirds. Now again, I know some of you would look back at the beginning and you would just say, I see that 20 and 30 are both divisible by 10. But the reason I review this is because we want to understand reducing fractions this way in order to be able to simplify rational expressions. Um, so how can we use this process to multiply the rational expressions? x plus 1 over x minus 1 times 3 divided by 2 times x plus 1. Well, my first step... I can do what we said. We multiply top times top, so I'd have x plus 1, that's a factor, so times 3, over x minus 1 times 2 times x plus 1. Now since I have parentheses, I can write those numbers just there. You could also put a dot on each side if that helps you see it. But then what we looked at when we did step 4 and canceled common factors, we can now look at this and cancel any common factors on top or bottom. So I see that I have an x plus 1 on top, an x plus 1 on bottom. So I'm left with 3 over, and I'm going to move the 2 to the front, 2 times x minus 1. Now yesterday, when we were adding and subtracting, we always left the denominator in factored form just because we were finding the least common denominator. Today, however, since we're actually multiplying expressions, I want you to multiply everything out in the end, which means we're going to get rid of the parentheses, and I'm left with 3 over 2x minus 2. Okay? Um, with the examples on the front, I'm going to go a little out of order. I actually want to go down to number 4 here, because I feel like that's the most simplified. Um, and what we want to do with this is we are first going to multiply straight across. So we have x times 3x minus 27 over x minus 9 times x plus 1. So I multiply top times top, bottom times bottom. Now I look now and I say, well, nothing cancels. So some of us would maybe multiply it out, but I need you to be careful um, because this goes back to simplifying rational expressions where first we need to factor. Okay, so I notice that in this um, parenthesis, I have a 3x minus 27. That has a greatest common factor of 3. And then I'd be left with x minus 9. And I have it divided by x minus 9 times x plus 1. And now I notice that the x minus 9 is the same. So I have x times 3, so that's 3x over x plus 1. So one strategy I have is that I would actually usually do my GC, or factor out my GCF here or do any factoring from the very beginning. That way when I rewrite it in this step, I have it factored out already. But either way works. So you should end up with 3x over x plus 1. Let's go back above and do number two and use that idea where we are now going to factor everything before we actually multiply. Okay, so I usually just write it right above the top of this one. I see x squared 8x. I see that it's the same as x times x minus 8. And sometimes I'll scribble it out. The 7x plus 35, I see that it has a GF, GCF of 7. So it's 7 times x plus 5. So that's instead of that. And then finally, I have the 14, but then the 
x squared plus 8x plus 15. I notice that's quadratic, so I use my x box method, and I factor it as x plus 3 times x plus 5. Okay, so I cancel all those things out. Now, when I go to rewrite it, I multiply across. So the top was x times x minus 8 times 7 times x plus 5. Okay, so now I write out those four things that I factored out, all divided by 14 times x plus 3 times x plus 5. Right away, I recognize that the x plus 5s cancel, and you guys might recognize something else, but we're going to do that in a second. I have 7x times x minus 8 over 14 times x plus 3. So I don't see any other factors canceling out here. Um, oh, I totally forgot my x plus 8, so I should have an x plus 8 on the end here. Okay, so I forgot to bring that over. That's a common mistake. Saw that I just made it. It does not cancel with the x minus 8. Um, one quick thing before I multiply everything out, I do notice that 7 and 14 are both divisible by 7. So this one cancels, so I'm actually left here with x times x minus 8 on top divided by, 14 divided by 7 is 2, times x plus 3, times x plus 8. Now to simplify, I multiply everything out. I'm left with x squared minus 8x on top. Now I have three pieces I'm multiplying together on the bottom. First, I chose to multiply these two, so I kept the 2, and I got x squared plus 8x plus 3x, which left me with plus 11x. And then 3 times 8 is plus 24. Could use the box model. And last but not least, I distribute that 2 through. So I have x squared minus 8x on the top over 2x squared plus 22x plus 2048. Almost ran out to multiply that one through. Okay, so that was my final answer there. Now I did those two first because 1 and 3 actually have another thing to look for. Um, when I look at the top of number 1, I notice that I can't factor that out. Um, I do notice that x squared minus 2x minus 8 is factorable, but I'm going to come up here and take my GCF. I have 2 times x squared minus 3x minus 10. And here's what I want you to notice, is I could factor x squared minus 2x minus 8 as x minus 4 times x plus 2. But when I look at this, if I have already replaced this, I notice right now that these two factors match, okay? Now I could factor that, that's x minus five times x plus two, and cancel the factors, but you may be able to recognize along the way places to save work. So I'm gonna show you that if I keep my eye on the end result, I might be able to save myself some time factoring. Again, if you had factored all of this out, it would work the same. Um, but because I stopped there, now I notice that this factor matches completely. And the only reason I didn't factor x squared minus 2x minus 8 is because I see right here that 3x squared times 2 is just going to give me 6x squared. And there's no way that's going to cancel with any factor of x squared minus 2x minus 8. So I save this one for third because it is one that you could have had to do a lot more factoring with. We could have factored three more things using the Xbox. Um, but two of them would have canceled, and then the third one, the x squared minus 2x minus 8, we would have had to multiply back out. So I encourage you to kind of keep your eye on the end, end game as you're factoring, and just to recognize that you may not always need to factor as much as you do. Okay, x squared minus 9, again, the more we factor, the quicker we'll be. x plus 3 times x minus 3. x minus 8 is fine as is x squared minus 5x minus 24, again using the xbox method, I got x plus 3 times x minus 8. And then 2x squared minus 18x, I factored out a 2x, and I got an x minus 9. Um, so as I look at that, all right, okay, so as I look at that, I write it out, I get x plus 3 
times x minus 3 times x minus 8 on top over x plus 3 times x minus 8 times 2x times x minus 9. I see that an x plus 3 cancels. I see that an x minus 8 cancels. And I am left on top with x minus 3 over 2x times x minus 9, which ultimately leaves me with an x minus 3 over, because we're multiplying, we're going to expand it out, 2x squared minus 18x. And that would be our final answer. Okay, last but not least, we're going to go through this pretty quickly. Um, what about if it's division? Well, the difference between 4 fifths times 5 6 and 4 fifths divided by 5 6. If it's division, we take the reciprocal of the second fraction and multiply. So the good news is it's nothing brand new, but I, in this case I would take 4 fifths times 6 over 5. Okay, which will give me 24 over 25. So we're going to use that strategy as we look here. Again, I'm still going to factor first. So I know that this top is 2 times x plus 3. I use the x box here. I get x plus 3 times x minus 1. But I first need to change it to x plus 11 over 4x now times x plus 3 times x minus 1, all over 2 times x plus 3. Okay. Now one thing I want us to look at is when we've rewritten it as multiplication, if it's already factored, I could actually just extend this line. And I really have all three factors on top times all these things on bottom. I recognize that the x plus 3 cancels. So I'm left with x plus 11 times x minus 1 over 4 times 2 is 8x. Last but not least, I distribute, and I get x squared plus 11x minus 1x, so plus 10x minus 11 over 8x. All right, number 2. I factor out on the bottom here, x times x minus 7. The top is 5x times x minus 8. The bottom using x box is x minus 8 times x minus 7. So again, I would start it as 20 over x times x minus 7 times the reciprocal of the bottom, so x minus 8 times x minus 7 over 5x times x minus 8, so the reciprocal of the second fraction. Extend that line so I don't have to rewrite it again. I can cancel anything that's on the same on top and bottom, so I can cancel out x minus 7, x minus 8, and I am left in this case with just a 20 on top and a 5xx, so 5x squared on the bottom. Last but not least, I see the 20 and the 5, and I know they're both divisible by 5, so I'm left with 4 over x squared. Number 3. Um, the top I can factor as, of the second fraction, x plus 7 times x plus 2, the bottom is x plus 2 times x minus 1. So when I rewrite it, x plus 7 squared is x plus 7 times x plus 7 over x squared times the reciprocal, so x plus 2 times x minus 1 over x plus 7 times x plus 2. Again, I just extend that line. The x plus 2's cancel. 1x plus 7 cancels. I am left with x plus 7 times x minus 1 on top over x squared. I distribute that out and I get x squared plus 6x minus 7 over x squared. And last but not least, my first fraction, 3 over times x minus 10. The top here would factor as 9 times x squared minus 3x minus 4 first, and then that factors as 9 times x minus 4 times x plus 1. So that's the top. The bottom just has a common denominator. So I rewrite it. 6x over 3 times x minus 10 times x times x minus 10 over 9 times 
x minus 4 times x plus 1.